Hello and welcome to an other episode of the Breathing Body Podcast. This podcast invites you to meet your body in a deeper and more meaningful way and to find your way back home. We explore tools and practices, share stories and experiences about how we can say yes to the body we inhabit. This is the most beautiful project life has to offer and I call it self-love. My name is Florina and I'm your host. I'm an osteopath with a background in dance and yoga and I'm based in London where I practice, lecture and research. And in this episode, I'm talking with the dancer, researcher, movement therapist and choreographer Hagit Yakira. Together, we embarked on a journey to explore so deep and meaningful questions. Is the artistic process ever not healing? Why do we dance? What does freedom mean and how much freedom can we give and live in any given structure? The end result is a conversation so raw and pure and humble and it brought tears to my eyes whilst we recorded and it's still moving in and through and with me and this is the breathing body. Let me tell you a little bit about Hagit. Hagit is an award-winning Israeli choreographer and director of her own company, Hagit Yakira Dance. Besides working with professional dancers and choreographing, she is teaching and she leads performance projects for the community and non-professional dancers as well. Hagit received her PhD with the title Relational Autobiographical Choreographies on a new choreographic practice from the Trinity Laban College. At present, she is an associate professor at the University of Stavanger in Norway. And her approach in general, as well as to movement research, is based on autobiography and different physical exploration of emotions. She is being informed by her background as a dance movement therapist alongside her background as a performer and a choreographer. I hope you will enjoy this episode and yeah, let it, let it move you, let it do something with you, let it uh, penetrate every cell and let yourself be inspired. And as always, leave a review, share this podcast episode with all your friends. This is a huge support for me to keep going. Lots of love and enjoy. And again, welcome, Ragit, on Thank the you. podcast. <laughs> it was such a nice uh, invitation. So I was uh, very happy we could find time. Yeah. yeah, it's been so beautiful. You know, I named the podcast The Breathing Body. And as it is, it's like with a dance. I just started somewhere and I thought, ah, well, time. Yeah, the movement of the podcast itself will show where it goes. And we've just talking about it, how... At the moment, I'm really re researching or sitting, moving with that whole theme about yeah, healing as an artistic process. And you just said before you had that conversation, can we ever call an art, art an artistic process not healing? Yeah. <laughs> and wow, what a wonderful place to start. So what else happened in that conversation you had yesterday? Or what was your, where did you land? <laughs> I think it's um, it, it's uh, the conversation started a while ago. Uh, mm -hmm. as a, uh, oh, how can I say? Maybe I should give it a bit more of an introduction. But um, mm -hmm. I am uh, now in the university setup, and uh, mm -hmm. we are doing uh, artistic research, which is the new old way of um, exploring and doing dance or researching dance and movement and. Um, uh, I think the where I am now in uh, Norway, in Stavanger, there is a really um, very, or oh, how do you say, I think it's a bit fake, but very um, strict boundaries or kind of a, mm -hmm. an, an attempt to create a boundary between mm -hmm. art, 
high art and and um, therapeutic art. Yes. Uh, and from where I come from, uh, I'm a dance movement therapist. I'm also a, mm -hmm. a choreographer. I was a, a dancer. I'm a dance teacher. For me, all these things are linked. And I, I don't know, um, I'm not sure I like to make these uh, strict boundaries. Um, mm -hmm. If I am going through a healing process, it's non, it, it's non, it's non, anyone's business. It's my business. Yes. My role at the end of the yes. day is to make art that is um, accessible, that is a communicative, that is a generous offer. Mm -hmm. uh, that has mm -hmm. the, um, that, uh, what happened to me in the process and, uh, I mean, it's my option. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, and and yeah. I actually think that uh, um, it's a very um, we are using art as therapy. We are offering people to be creative to stimulate their minds. And then when we come to artists as a job, all of a sudden it has to be very clinical and very um, mm -hmm. objective or very detached. Mm -hmm. I um, I completely disrespect that. I like when things mm -hmm. um, interchange all the time, and so this is where the conversation came from. And um, and then we had uh, we, we saw a piece that was very very personal about one's loss, uh, and it was uh, it was uh, it's part of the process, uh, and uh, and we we had to talk about. Um, how do we, how do we, um, I can't reveal too much, but how, how, how do we, um, how do we communicate it? Mm -hmm. What do we say about mm -hmm. it? Where, where, where is the boundary between uh, one's own therapy and, and, uh, and yes. a general therapy? I really yes. believe that uh, art can allow people to reflect on something deeper when they see it. You, I think mm -hmm. it can either be a very, uh, Wow, 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 uh, and a, a moment of admiration when you admire what you, what you see. But on another hand, I think it can really uh, touch some personal chords if you allow it to touch you. I think there's an allowance that, that has to happen. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that is really important what you just said, that art can reflect something. And in both settings, right, if I, if I watch or also... If I watch or if I do, I feel that's what I so much witness when I move or what I experience when I move me for render, right? The process I can't I can't describe or I can't label or explain, but it it holds a mirror. I think that's what it is for me, Hagit. It, it holds a mirror to something in me quite deep, which otherwise wouldn't kind of wouldn't get a voice. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and I might never know what that part is. But the just freeing or expressing of that, yes. that's then what I would say, that's where, where healing and then we are with the question, what does healing mean, right? I think yeah. healing is just a shift, a change. Yeah. And I think it's also, for me, a healing is also a moment of acknowledging. Yes. You see, when, you are, when you're able to see, um, and I, again, I think what's so beautiful about movement and dance is that you see, you might not be able to articulate it so clearly, but you can sense it. There's a sense, mm -hmm. uh, you sense something, you, you're feeling something, you're experiencing something. And once you allow that experience to, to be felt, I think mm -hmm. that's where, the, for me, the healing process starts. Yes. Um, and and yes. that's what I like so much about uh, movement and, and dance and mm -hmm. And, and um, we, we, we can't always put words into things, what we mm -hmm. feel, what we had mm -hmm. been through. I think some, some experiences mm -hmm. are too big to articulate, also too, mm -hmm. too deep to articulate. But once you move them, it's, it, you know, it's like shifting energy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, it does something. It does something. It, it's, it's like when you get a hug, you don't even know why, the, but you get, you get a feeling of closeness, of warmth, of, of connection. You feel you belong, you feel not alone, and it gives some kind of... Um, yes. You can move forward. I think it's the same with dance. If we are enabling mm -hmm. 
the dancer or the, the mover to, to feel embraced and held and, and uh, challenged in a good way, then there's moving forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what when <clears throat> when you said how if we can just or I thought yeah when we can feel exactly the sense the the sensation of the experience right because yeah. every experience it doesn't matter what it is but first it it evokes a sensation I so strongly know that the true <laughs> language of my body is what I call silent felt sensation and then I think right back to the embryo hagit right we the first things which we ever experienced was was touch and then from that touch came movement yes um and then somehow we kind of completely model it up in our today's worlds yes um, but that's why we then move move forward because think about the embryo the embryo always unfolds and moves yes. forwards because yeah. it's always sensing it moving yeah I sit with my twin. I have twins, uh, yes. twin girls, and they were uh, in a very. It was a very uh, rare um, pregnancy mm -hmm. because they share the same placenta and the same uh, pregnancy sac. So, so they are. There's nothing that wow. divide them between one another. They are completely mm -hmm. uh, united. But yeah. and when I see them now growing, the touch is something that they constantly look for in one another. They have to fight, they have to 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 mm -hmm. wrestle. And it's their their relationship is all about tactile. It's amazing to watch. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they can uh, la lay on top of each other rolling and scratching mm -hmm. and screaming but they don't let go. <laughs> So it's, yes. you really see how, um, uh, and, and this then they can go apart again, but they mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. uh, to feel that they're, I, I always think that that's how they feel they're safe again in the world. I just want yeah. to say that brings us back to safety, right? To yeah. And the womb space is a safe space. That is so beautiful. The womb space is a safe space to create. Yeah. And so then the question as, as artists or dancers, for me very much, I love the poetic language, what what is the womb I need from on a day-to-day -day base? And that womb will look different, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but what, yeah, what are the fluids, literally the media around me, which I need to feel, to feel safe? And there is also about acknowledgement, to feel acknowledged in, in what I create, both from myself and the people I work but with. But I think what, what you are uh, mentioning here is, um, it's, it's so important because, uh, you know, that's why we call it a held space uh, when we are creating mm -hmm. something or we, are, we want to create a safe space. And, and that safe space, of course, is, it's not just the walls around us, but it's, it's our voice. And it, it, I think that's why when I teach, mm -hmm. when I, my voice is always there. It's kind of um, so people don't, never feel that they're alone. It's like a constant uh, wind. Uh, I don't think it works for everyone, but uh, those mm -hmm. Those who uh, it works for, then they really lean on this voice mm -hmm. and the station and the sound and the volume. And, and it's also mm -hmm. the music that you choose. And it's also the way you constantly walk around uh, mm -hmm. your participants. Yeah, you constantly move around so they feel an energy. They, they, they feel that you're always there. Uh, so, so in Tell a way, us more about that, Hagit, because, yeah. you know, that... That is so interesting to say that now. If I now think back when I met you and I met you in, in dance class um, settings. And yes, I felt very safe. I felt very held. I always felt that it was that a warm, energetic bubble. Yeah. And yes, I would fall and make mistakes, but there was something in the room that's so unique, which just would carry one forward again. Yes. Um, and that's the idea. That's the idea. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the idea, and and you know the the uh, we met many years ago, and this mm -hmm. class I don't teach this class mm -hmm. this kind of classes anymore. I I went I go more and more into uh, material that is um, oh, how do you say much more um, free. I, I like to free. I think that the, the main thing that I um, since we met until now, it's mm -hmm. how much. Uh, freedom I can give in a structure but, uh, mm. but the main thing is that the freedom won't 
allow people to feel lost, feel um, un... Uh, how do you say? For me, it's like this balance between giving people the agency and support that agency. I, I, I felt many times as a dancer and as a student of dancers that I would get a material, a dance material that was kind of... Um, uh, but I, I wouldn't have any agency to to mm-hmm. to deliver it. And on the other hand, when I had to do some improvisation task, I felt completely lost in the freedom. And I think this experience mm-hmm. uh, for me it's to find a balance between how much freedom I can I would like mm-hmm. to open. And I I will benefit the students or the dancers uh, in order, not, but still not to feel completely lost. To mm-hmm. keep to keep giving them. Hints that it's it's the right way. It's an interesting way, you know. Like, a, yeah, mm-hmm. give hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm, the balance between freedom and structure, and some, and it's somewhere exactly in the sweet spot where a very potent agency lies, right? Mm. Yes. Tell us more about that. How? What did you explore, discover, or how, how do you do that? I. Uh, I think it comes, this notion of freedom comes for me in many different ways. First, as a dancer and as a choreographer, I, I don't like to teach material per se. I, I don't like when people feel they have to copy my body. I think my body has lots of limitations and no one needs to follow these limitations. They have to, they have a different body. They can do different things. And, um, and, uh, and I also realized that as a, as a human being, I, I keep questioning what does freedom means. What is freedom of speech? What is freedom of being? Mm-hmm. Um, um, I think um, I have many people, some friends, or not many, but a few friends that were completely free spirits and had no structure in their life, and it was such a destructive thing for them that they had to go to a very structured way of life almost um, mm-hmm. uh, followed by uh, uh, they had to follow kind of a, how do you say um, a guru or something you know so that mm-hmm. tell them yes, everything a master yeah and 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 so for me it's like uh, where where that where do i lose my uh, agency mm-hmm. as a free person but also where do i lose my agency as a very structured uh, in a very structured a way of living. Uh, mm. How can I make art in these polarities, and where can where can they coexist in a way? Mm-hmm. When my dancers dance, I don't want I want them to feel that they are themselves in my language. And how can I seduce them to do that without telling them? How can we form a language together, which is something? Um, mm-hmm how can I direct them or, or lead them or seduce mm-hmm. them into what I want to do, but uh, not force them, not mm-hmm. make them just by offering, just by wording, just by voice suggest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really call it an art of seduction, kind of seducing people into my world, but not forcing it. Mm-hmm. That is wonderful. An art of seduction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. You're kind of giving, giving, giving a taste, giving a, yes. a flavor of something, but then see what's... Yeah, I literally think yeah. now of the metaphor of cooks, right? You just give <laughs> them something and then, wow, they come up with so complete different meals and dishes. Yes. And I find it a really interesting question you post there, how, how to feel yourself. You know, it sounds so simple, mm. but I actually find it really difficult sometimes. <laughs> And 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 if our this is why I I, I think it'd be my students and, and my dancers it's never an easy task. Many dancers are very exhausted during this uh, processes, and mm-hmm. many students keep telling me uh, we can't hide in your classes. It's very demanding. Mm-hmm. We can never hide. You always see us. Uh, which I always think is uh, so it's great, but uh, I never mm-hmm. thought it's a bad thing. But I think. Sometimes mm-hmm. we need probably to hide and we just want people to tell us what to do and we don't want to. Mm-hmm. It's a big thing to think, you know, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's not an easy task. I yeah, I feel. Want... I had little experience to work with you, but what I 
feel to remember and what I hear now is very much that you very much create the space Hagit, in which you encourage people for gently force them to express their voice and yeah. isn't that if we start to express our voice in one area or through movement that's what I experience in life then in other areas of life that that, that voice wants to express itself too and first unconsciously and that can yeah that is challenging and that can be yes that can be exhausting I'm thinking now back to healing and recovery processes and when I recovered from my eating stuff after the dance um yeah I could feel how suddenly that voice which I started to uncover there then wanted to come through in what I did for to make a living and in relationships and suddenly knows and yeses arise which oh you didn't know that yeah <laughs> you had yes and and mm. it's I, I worked one year with an eating disorder as a dance movement therapy. Mm. I studied dance movement therapy and I was, one year I had, uh, I had um, kind of a trainee in a hospital mm -hmm. with, with a youth. And um, my, uh, I, I had a dance movement therapist who was guiding me a little bit during that process. And she kept telling me, you have to try to convince them to want to be healed. It's first, mm. it's first this... Um, you need to want to, because it's a very hard process. Mm -hmm. It goes mm -hmm. through, you go through some exactly. un unpleasant feelings and emotions mm -hmm. and, 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 and mm -hmm. you need to, and you, you need to become the, um, the agents. <laughs> yes. It's hard. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. To become the agent or to uh, just support their agency as long as their own agency takes now I feel yeah. a bird taking its wings but yes. it's probably yeah or that's how I felt I felt there was a bird that I needed <laughs> yeah, yeah of course of... you need the support at the beginning and it's support to float yeah. until yeah mm. we are just taking a little pause from my conversation with Hagid to share with you some exciting news a lot has been happening at the breathing body in the last couple of months Yes, the breathing body is shedding its skin, its skin, its suit is getting too tight and it's time to let go of it and welcome what has been waiting underneath. Yes, I'll keep it very mystical and magic because it is. And what I'm trying to say is that this episode, today's episode is not just the last episode of season one of The Breathing Body, it is the last episode of The Breathing Body ever. I will be back in three weeks time. We'll take a little break, big breather, and I will be back in three weeks time with not just a new episode, but a new face and face of this podcast, the physical expression of me really leaning into my own calling. And if you would like to be the first one to hear and know and witness this exciting move, then do head over to my webpage and sign up for my newsletter. Follow me on Instagram. These are the two ways through which I will be sharing my lift experience of this process with you and all the wonderful offerings arising from it. You can find all those infos in the show notes. So let's head back. Maybe take us, I think that's a time to go a little more to your story. Take us back. I would be really curious to hear if I saw that correctly. It was in 2004 around that time when you start, when you started dance therapy. But before that, you you studied dance, right? And you already were a dancer. So what what was the build up or led you? What was that? Take us back how many years it needs. What, what brought you from? Yeah. I, uh, I, I, mm -hmm. I, I always loved dancing and I danced and I went, then I was accepted to the academy mm -hmm. when I was 12. It's, it's high school. I think it's, it's a fantastic uh, high school or yeah, it can be fantastical, a fantastic uh, high school uh, from 12 until 18. Uh, one of the best one in Israel when we danced a lot. And and already there, I 
I didn't really fit. I felt I didn't fit completely the dance world. I I always looked a bit different. I I um I had different uh, ambition. I I I always needed. Uh, I I was always uh, emotional about the process rather than uh, thinking so much about the technique and being so good. I, I wanted to create. I I. I for me, it was a, a safe place to be, or not safe, but but um, because it wasn't safe at all. But it was. Uh, I really. Uh, I didn't need to speak when I dance. I didn't need to to express a lot of things. I could just dance, and I think there were a lot of things. I felt that I didn't know what they were, but somehow when I moved and when they were dancing, there was something there happened which I cannot explain. But I was so uninterested in this uh, being very good technical dancer. I remember people I saw dancers trying really hard to turn more than one turn or being mm. really high on the toes, and I just I, I I didn't like this. I didn't see the point. So uh, when we, but I love creating, and I was mm. I was I was very encouraged to keep creating. But when I was 18, I decided to go to the army. In Israel, you have to go to the army, whether you are a, a boy, a, a man or a woman. Or a, mm -hmm. um, And uh, some people, of course, don't do it. They try to take another route. But I really wanted to do it. And I did something uh, which was very amazing. It's, we, I worked with the, with the boys, 18 years old, years, years old soldiers that came from very destroyed houses, uh, drug addicts, mm -hmm. alcohol addicts, very poor, very unfortunate people who didn't know how to read and write very very unfortunate people in our society and then the army takes them and teach them to read and teach them to to write and teach them what is a democracy and just try to give them some kind of a frame of where they are living and and also give them a profession so we take them for five months work with them a lot on education and then they get another five months to learn a profession so I was in the first five months when you train them, you train them, you teach them, you, you, you. And it, I felt I did something really good for others. And that inspired to continue this goodness. Um, and I don't know, I, I left the army. I went to do the BA in dance. I really don't know why. I think I was very lost. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I could dance and it was there and I just did it. But I, I really... I grew to hate it so much. I grew to hate uh, me in it. I, I grew to hate the world, I, the dance world. I grew to fear it. I grew to feel uh, uh, that I this is not exactly what I want and this is not exactly my place. Uh, and then my mom told me that uh, I should maybe learn dance movement therapy because there's something to do with dance. I didn't even know it existed and I decided to do it. Mm. And there, the whole world changed for me. First, uh, yeah, the, everything changed because first, oh, I loved movement and there was all of a sudden uh, some um, kind of meaning for that movement and some kind of a generosity for others, not just for my own body doing the great plié, you know. There was uh, something to do with the soul, something to do with my mm -hmm. soul, something to do with healing, something to do with my healing. And I think that the journey was constantly my healing in, in relation to other people's healing. You know, it was constantly parallel. And, uh, and that healing process made me realize that, one, I don't want to uh, be a therapist, but I do want to do something with something therapeutic in some way and I felt again very lost so I moved to London and uh, study NMA which I I, think I just chose a random mm. one um, and that's where I discovered during that MA that I want to create and that this creation will probably be completely linked to my study as a dance movement therapist in a way that uh, it links to me to feminism, to the story of the self, to, to how the personal become public, how uh, yes. w w when the private and w what is private, what is personal, what is political, what is the voice, 
who was my voice before I discovered or before I started discovering my voice, who told my story. Um, mm. uh, and and I, I started to be really engaged with female writings and female uh, creation and with intimacy and, and, and the role of the audience public and, and, and friendship and, and somehow all this needs to link. And that's how I started also teaching um, the way I was teaching. I, I, I never, I, I remember uh, I was going to one festival and they said, oh, we're going, we're going to give you this uh, beginner's class, but you're going to get the professional class. And I said, well, then don't give me the professional class. I want to, to teach the beginner's class. I, I always loved this um curiosity and this humanity and 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 completely naked uh, no, na- you know naked soul and naked body and not gender i love this i love this i i i and and the more i grew and the more the braver i become the more i realized that these uh, kind of uh, experiences of of people who maybe not as experienced in dance, but experienced in life in different ways are my passion. Yeah. That's my story in a, in a nutshell. Mm. <laughs> wow. Oh, <laughs> you said there are so many things I, I want to respond to. First of all, I, you said I didn't need to speak when I dance. And then I saw that threw me right back to the question we yeah. had before, how to feel yourself, because then I thought, yes, that's why I dance. Yeah. I dance because I feel myself. Yes. And that's why I dance. It's very simple, raw and pure. And I loved how you said to to continue the goodness. And you, you were at the dance training. That's where I could have cried and you grew to yeah. hate it you grew to fear it and that's exactly how I felt Hagit. I that's what I grew into and I knew that there was more that that medium dance that that was not what it initially wanted to offer to me or the place it wanted to bring to me and you started dance therapy and everything changed you said meaning and generosity yes. and isn't exactly that healing that yes. Yes. If we can bring meaning and yes, generosity to ourselves, to ourselves and, and, and right? To really, now as an educator, I can say that it's really important for me that that um, the students mm-hmm. understand um, what um, <laughs> gift they can give to, to, to others, you know? It's... Um, as artists, yes. we get money from 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 the government, and we mm-hmm. we do we do art. But what is that role of the art, and what, mm-hmm. what how do we pay back? You know, what do we give back, um, mm-hmm. and how do we meet our audience mm-hmm. eye to eye? Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. never think we are mm-hmm. more. I think dance movement therapy mm-hmm. really enable me to embrace humbleness in the most beautiful way um, and to, to appreciate it mm-hmm. so much. I think I, my, 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 my family's, you know, it's humbleness was a big word that uh, we kept, kept being injected. It. Uh, I think my dad kept saying, stay humble, Hagit, stay humble, stay humble. And you hear, I hear it as a mantra, but, when I dance, mm-hmm. when I study dance movement therapy, I understood what this humbleness means. It means that you are a channel for something. You you get a gift, you give it back. You know, there's always give and take, um, and uh, and that you have to meet people mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. clever, as beautiful as they are. Never assume anything. Mm-hmm. So, uh, mm-hmm. mm. Wow, humbleness, you said, being a channel for something. And that's what you mean with the gift, right? If I can dance or create or perform and that, if that the gift is that that's because there is my humbleness or I do that from a humble point. I'm not sure how I need to put it, but if it can be a channel for something for the audience, right? 
I, I, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I really, I, I have a big problem with uh, high art terminology in stuff. In, in, in no way there, there, this term high art is how art is more prestige than everything. I don't follow that. I don't believe in that. I think that people mm -hmm. or, or society or, or uh, community is the highest of all. So we can actually live side by side. And, and art is just one more way of, of reflecting yes. it, of sharing yes. it. And, and yeah. Mm -hmm. But that is so interesting, right? That you talk about the hierarchy and that's, that's, I think, what I feel so much was so planted into me. And we're still, to, nowadays, sometimes I witness myself a judgmental voice saying, but you could have been that high dancer and now yeah. you do, now you, you know, now you do dance movement therapy or now you go into healing. And you just, wrote, it's so interesting. And I totally agree with yes. you and I don't believe that voice, but I just witness it coming, that I still one part of me, which, yeah, which exactly... Yeah also has for years put the higher uh, for me i think higher. something land um, uh, when i gave birth i gave birth quite old mm -hmm. not quite old i was 45 and uh, the last moment and uh, mm -hmm. I, I i thought I, I started very late to create i started when i was actually 31 you know that's when i actually land on wanting to do it and i had to go through a really long process mm -hmm. of understanding what i create how i create i wanted to find a voice i didn't want to copy anyone so I can say that it took me a few, many years to actually land on who I am and what I want to do. Be beautiful journey, but well, beautiful in its mm -hmm. complexity and, and emotional uh, uh, realization. But yeah, and um, mm -hmm. but I always wanted some kind of a recognition and some kind of uh, prestige. And when I gave birth, all of a sudden faded it faded in a really organic way all of a sudden it was more mm. I, I have to say something I want to say something I, I have a I'm, I know what I what I want to do and I, I, I can sense my texture and I welcome those who want to see mm. it, it changed a lot in that um, I think I felt mm -hmm. I, it was a um, a journey of feeling need the need to feel belong to something. I belonged a lot to my art, and now I belong to people. Yes. And my art is another mm -hmm. way to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it somehow sounds that I have never not yet given birth, um, but I imagine that the birth. I know that the birth process i mean this I feel is so, our yeah. most deepest knowing as women right give birth so going through that i just imagine i feel it kind of all oh, right what yeah. takes you back into that whole lineage of ancient to that. I modern I mamas want... right that's yeah. at yes yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So is you yes, yes, is there, yeah. but not, um, a surrender but was... yeah Yes, but it was my babies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the twins, and, of course, um, yeah. But still, uh, it's yeah. the it's it's yeah. it's. I feel it's the allowingness of to surrender to motherhood, and I love it. I love this surrender. <sighs> so uh, that is yeah. Yes. And then I think, to I think surrender to coming to mm -hmm. say a strange uh, mm -hmm. harmony or oh, this harmony in a harmon in a harmonical way, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, this brings me back to that question: you feel yourself, or what does healing mean? I feel. For me, my healing process was very much one of was yeah. one of motherhood. I had to develop my inner strong mother. That's what it was. A part of me who exactly 
yes. who hears or feels these emotions and feelings and um, which want to be expressed and the mother yeah. who exactly Beautiful. notices needs yeah. and responds yeah yeah, yeah 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 so you know healing yes. is actually also a birthing process a person yes. process into yeah it is into our yeah. inner mother yes to, uh, <laughs> surrendering to our inner motherhood mother. in a way it's um it's a it's a mm-hmm. it's a giving and it, for me it's again it's, it's a freedom and structure in a way you you give freedom you, pr- you create structure you allow yourself to grow you, yes. you 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 find a way to to support this and you find a way not to fluidly mm-hmm. because i think it, so it doesn't flow away you know it can just go i feel that there's a uh, water and that, that water needs to be held because otherwise it will just go mm-hmm. it will disappear kind of hold it yeah yes yeah yes and it's also about agency right with students or with children children students students children it's also about how much exactly how much reading structure does my child need to develop that potent agency and isn't that that ragit i feel makes your work so rich and so so important for the world that's the gift in it you know it's it's not just a piece on stage but it's actually it's it's something i don't want to say it's it informs yes, I hope all so. our areas of life i hope it's so i I, I mean you, you, one know I, I you never know how it will be mm-hmm. received and i, I think uh, uh, for many people um oh i don't know but i i assume that for many people it's you know I think that the uh, art is always an offer and uh, mm-hmm. you can take it or not and uh, you, you take it with who you are and I think sometimes mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, I feel my offer is uh, um, I, I want to believe that my offer is generous but I'm sure some people will, will not feel it but I now I stop thinking about that mm-hmm. I, 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 I do something that uh, I feel make yes. uh, I think every time I create something, it tells something about who I am in that moment, not just the story of my life, but sensations, emotion, and also the, the, the methodology I'm using or the vocabulary that I'm using is, is something to do with, um, with how I grow. You know, my pieces started quite strict, like my classes, and, and the more I grow, the more open they are, the more freedom the dancers get, mm-hmm. the more... Um, the, the different ways I try to find this mutual language, you know, uh, I trust myself more. I, I trust the dancers more. I trust the process mm-hmm. more. I trust, um, and I really know what I love. And I also don't feel shy to say, I like beauty mm-hmm. and I like harmony and I love femininity, not femininity in the way we are, uh, you know, putting me, no, no, femininity in the most, deepest way, Jungian way, that it's unperfect and it's um, vulnerable and it's um, it's dependent and it's uh, unflashy and it's, uh, yeah. So so in a way, I, I, I am more certain mm-hmm. in, in what I like and I love the word beauty because I think it's so complex and it's so... Oh, it's so needed in this world. I want my work to be beautiful. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. finally, I can say it. You know, I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be 49 in uh, two weeks. <laughs> I got the permission. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, but it's a journey. It's a, it's a journey. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. Wow, again, you touched me really deeply there and kind of (laughs) without words, (laughs) we we are dancing, without words, you opened that last bubble, which I thought I'd love to explore. I I had this question to ask you about how to meet fears and deal with fears, because I'm sure that some listeners from We Talk and that some people will feel fear of doing all the things we said. And then you started talking how you learn to trust the process. And yeah. to know, I know what I love. And I feel, yes. oh, this is so key, especially with fears, right? For me, a lot changed when I started to ask my question. I had the fear of not feeling light. And I noticed 
lightness is aliveness or something you can notice if I would wake yeah. up and ask myself what makes me feel alive yes. I would actually feel equally light yes and 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 But that was also about to also know what to I know. love for me it's also to acknowledge uh, what I'm afraid of I, I think for a long time I, I there was a fear I I was so afraid of the fear I couldn't ever mm. say it out loud you know um uh, and and, and the, the older I get the more I I, I, I am willing to look at fear I, I remember I have a big fear two big fears in my life one is uh, riding the bicycle which mm -hmm. sounds very stupid and one is to jump headlong mm -hmm. like head into the pool mm -hmm. I, I cannot do both things and for many years I yeah. I, and I, I use it as a metaphor now. I didn't accept it. And I was, um, I was trying to ride the bicycle. I was, but I hated it. And I, I, would, I wouldn't sleep the day before. I, I, I would. Until one day I'm saying, okay, this is a fear. And, and I, I have to accept it. And I, I will find a different way to find balance and joy. I'll use my legs in a different way. The same is with the pool. I love the pool. I don't need to jump head long. I can mm. jump with my feet first. And, and to embrace yes. that fear and to look at it with empathy. Yes. The same is with, with dance. Uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 I remember uh, some discussions I had with my sister and my mom, for example, or some friends are saying, oh, but try to do this and use better this and, and maybe do more flashy things and thinking, oh, God, I'm so, I, I, I can't, I don't, that's not my personality, I feel afraid and I was crying and rather than just saying okay that's i accept it yeah that's i work with this kind of dancers and i, I work with this kind of music i don't need all this flashy stuff yeah and and oh, but it took so me a while refreshing. to look at the fear in the eye and to and to mm -hmm. not feel defeated um i think the most no, I just I think in society we are this mocking. This is so here rich. A no, bit. Go on. We are go on. we are we are not accepting it, mm -hmm. and and yes. then we do things mm -hmm. or people, to, and it. I don't know. I think it's okay. I'm afraid, and now I saying it out loud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. And on one level, already yeah. that will do will do something and will bring us forward. <laughs> and I want to say this is so refre this is so refreshing <laughs> to hear that because it, it again made me think of you know fear can also has also to fear as allow myself allow myself to yes. to surrender to the knowing that I know what I love, and that's what I had with the dancing. I came yeah. to point I realized. And I don't love to go to auditions and yes. I don't love to do that ballet class and I don't love it. So it's yes. okay if I'm afraid of because my heart takes me there and yes. I'm yes. thriving and now. It's you amazing know, that right. you listen. It was right that I acknowledge yeah. the fear. But, uh, but that's so refreshing. And of course, sometimes it's good to, I don't know, to push through it and do an EFT and blah, blah. But can we just yes. use the fear as that so nurturing point to or but I surrender really to the don't knowing. believe that, that we have to resist every fear that I think some fear are so important to embrace mm -hmm. and then to find your own way mm -hmm. and yes and to dance yeah. with it as long as it needs I think so, or not. Some, that's some, what I now some see things are not meant to be to one, you know. I have a friend and she's afraid of taking up the elevator. So she's going up the stairs. And and why do we always have to put ourselves in the way that we have to fight this? We don't we don't mm -hmm. always have to mm -hmm. conquer the fear. We can we can we can find a way and if we find a way to live with it and to embrace it and mm -hmm. that's okay. Yes. I don't think everything is going to be a yes. war. <laughs> yes. And yeah. And there we circle back 
to the feminine. You mentioned the feminine several times and that made me think of goodness. And I think what the world needs is the feminine energy, the archetype, the right. And that has to do with fear as well. Can the feminine is yeah. the is the one which is already round and whole, is the body, is the recipient. Yeah. And can we also just the rece- receive yes. the fear and, the and humanity, see the beauty the, the, in the, the, that? The, the, yeah. Yes. The humanity in that. <laughs> wow. I we well, <laughs> I did like enjoy that that duet <laughs> with you this morning, <laughs> and it yeah stimulated many yeah touched many wonderful parts in me, and I just let them being touched. <laughs> is there before we wrap up? Is there any that sounds always so harsh last word? Now is there something you'd like to yeah to give the listeners on their way as a oh. up? Wrapping up say, thing. <laughs> I have to say, but um, hmm. maybe I th- yes, I think I would like to say something and and to to show that it's a, not a, a, a it's we're that I'm not trying to romanticize it. It's not a it's not a romantic uh, uh, process mm-hmm. or, or idea. Mm-hmm. It's it's no. um, it's very tough. It's very brutally honest. To look at fear mm-hmm. is brutal. To be honest, mm-hmm. really honest, um, it's brutal. It's brutal to see someone's one's weakness, one's uh, inability. Mm-hmm. It's never easy, and uh, that's the humble process. Mm-hmm. So, so it's not. It's not a romantic process. It's very hard. It's very. It can be very um, uh, lonely and. Uh, and and, and 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 brutal but it's it's rewarding because the truth or truthfulness can come of it and and progression and meaning 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 i think it gives meaning i think we are now i when i see our students and i see the media i think people are looking for meaning and they look for meaning outside you know they embody it rather than they, they are embodying, they're, they're taking it mm-hmm. out and put it in rather than taking it from the inside. And I think yes. that process allows this kind of meaning. Meaning is never easy. You know, it's never uh, straightforward. It's a lot of grief no. and but there, there is a reward I, always. Yeah. And for me, that's maybe the main thing to say that it's not a happy yes. or lucky Mm. It's happy, but uh, and it's a lucky, you. but it's a slow yes. walking. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you for saying that. And my, what is my last word? Yeah, meaning is raw and pure. I feel I uncover yeah. lots of rawness at the moment in my life, and it brings lots of meaning, <laughs> and yeah. and it's really good. <laughs> It's, I feel our life, you know, yes, I think I want my life to be yeah. raw and pure. And oh, I want so nice to talk to about these things. I think it's so beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. For your and good luck with the PhD. It sounds an amazing thing and so needed. Wow. (laughs) Yes, you know me in the meantime and very often I'm just so grateful and so deeply touched what we can what we can win and call out of us through these conversations and dialogues I have with my wonderful guests and I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed listening to Hagid's experience and wisdom and yeah her lift experience of her work and this world and as always if you did enjoy this episode and if you're enjoying this podcast then do share it with your friends leave a review um, this is a huge 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 support and i wish you a wonderful summer i wish you a wonderful time and i will be back very very soon with watch this space an exciting new phase of this podcast. Lots of love.